Okay, hello, welcome to the podcast. I'm Victor, I'm here with Forrester. Forrester, could you introduce yourself to the audience, please? Hello, everyone. Hi, my name is Forrester. Um, I'll say I'm a weightlifter, Olympic weightlifter, and I compete for the Ghana national team. Uh, I recently just returned back from the Commonwealth Games, which was, in, uh, which was held in Australia uh, two months ago. So, yeah. Okay, so I mean, a lot of people get uh, themselves confused between Olympic weightlifting and powerlifting. Could you explain to us the difference between the two sports? So there's two complete different sports. Olympic weightlifting is uh, so recognized uh, by mm. the Olympic Committee, okay. and um, it, it is an Olympic sport, hence it's called Olympic. It's one of the pioneer sports that started the Olympics mm-hmm. during the Greek time, um, and involved two lift. So uh, one, of the, one of the disciplines is uh, snatch, okay. which is a one movement from the ground, and you get the bar over your head. Okay. Um, with a wider grip, and we have the clean and jerk, which is two separate movements. So with a clean, you got to get the weight off the ground and put it on your shoulder as you clean, mm-hmm. and then as you stand up, you got to take your time and jerk it. So it's main, it's uh, more or less a uh, technique base mm-hmm. um, s- sort of uh, movements, mm-hmm. and pretty much yeah, that's it. Unlike uh, with powerlifting, it's just deadlift and the, just the, the normal regular lifts that mm-hmm. y- you see people doing in the gym. Okay, cool. So, um, if you could just uh, explain to us your fitness journey from the start, so how you got into becoming into Olympic lifting, yeah. and what were you doing like previously to that? Yeah, um, in terms of my f- fitness journey, um, I've always been involved in sports. Um, started off with taekwondo, mm-hmm. and uh, with time I moved on to playing rugby, and uh, as I moved on, went to play American football. With American football, I played for eight years. Mm-hmm. And after my American football career, I picked up the sports of just uh, lifting heavy stuff off the ground. And um, I did went to a gym, um, uh, pretty much just picked up from there. Just okay, so in terms of just a quick one about American football, yeah. like, um, what, what position did you play in American? I played running back. Um, okay. Yeah, I loved running <laughs> through people and uh, hitting people, so okay. I was more like the power back if, okay. if I needed to gain five years to, to get our first down so mm-hmm. we can progress into the fields, into the opponent fields. Uh, mm-hmm. I was the person who called on and uh, so savage one too. I had never let it easy for the defense. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah, I was a savage one. Just so that, was, people, that, yeah. that must have been a lot of fun. Like, who, who did you, because cause who did you play with? What team were you playing with? I played for, I started off with uh, London Olympians mm-hmm. and then, um, I played with them for three years. I went on to university. Mm-hmm. I earned myself um, a tri- walk and try out mm-hmm. in the States. Okay. And um, pretty much after, after that, I just came back to London and got on with the weightlifting and straight on into the national team of the okay. Guardian. That was so it. This, is, this, this is interesting. This state spots <laughs> now, this is interesting. You said you had a walk on try out in yeah. the States. For, for which team? For where did so you go? I, I had a walk and try out for West Virginia University, the okay. Mountaineers, okay. Um, in 2012. Mm-hmm. And then um, it didn't go as planned, but it was a great experience, and okay. hence uh, I had to come back to to doing something different. Okay, and I picked up the sports of weightlifting. Okay, so in in terms of um, the the sport of weight weightlifting, then mm-hmm. where does that come into the equation? Where where does your starting to say I, I want to do weightlifting? I want to. Well, you know, as a, as an athlete, when you pick up a sport, you just want to pretty much take it on and take it all the way through to the end mm-hmm. um, in terms of lifting heavy stuff um, from early ages as a young guy I knew I had immense amount of energy and strength that I could mm-hmm. play with mm-hmm. in every sport or in anything that I did mm-hmm. in life so um, once I went into the gym and I, I saw weightlifting I, I said to myself you know what I could do this easy mm-hmm. and I wasn't going to do it for fun I didn't want to do it as a mediocre lifter I really wanted to do it and see how far I can get mm-hmm. on at the food chain on top of the food chain or at the elite level and um, yeah pretty much picked up from there within one year mm-hmm. I competed in my, ne- my first uh, national competition okay. the English championship and then move on to British championship okay. and then move straight on to the African championship and I've, I did accomplish all of this within one year. So, wow! So was, that, that sounds like an amazing determined. progress. Yeah, right? I and was you, determined too. And you, you, you knew yourself really well. Yeah. So, so talk to me about um, the first time you went into a major competition. My first major prep. competition. Yes. <laughs> My first major competition was, uh, I would say, um, the English Championship. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it was more or less uh, I needed to qualify. I needed to go into this competition with the intention of qualifying for my first British Championship. Okay, what was the weight mark you needed? Um, I, top of my head, probably uh, recall about maybe 285, mm -hmm. 285 kilo. Is that, uh, is so that so a total? Or? Yeah, it's in a complete total mm -hmm. to qualify for the British Championship at that mm -hmm. time. And um, I wasn't too far off, mm -hmm. um, but I needed to work hard to achieve that goal, mm -hmm. to achieve that qualification total. Mm -hmm. So I was very uh, determined mm -hmm. and uh, I worked hard to achieve that goal at the, at the English Championship. And it felt different. Mm -hmm. Com Completely different because I was used to playing a team sports game. Or yeah. I'll say I, I was used to being part of a team, mm -hmm. and now I just go on the stage and I'm just by myself, and it's me against my greatest obstacle, which mm -hmm. is the bar of let's say loaded up to 160, and I've got to move this mm -hmm. to be able to get through to my next, to to get through to, to the, the next, next level. Round, yeah. Next round, yeah, and it, it is it's completely different because it's just you. It's one man against. An well, obstacle, and you just got to go over that obstacle to get to the next target. So, okay, so so when you step up the bar to the bar, mm -hmm. and you're about to pick it up, mm -hmm. what's going through your mind? Uh, nothing, to be honest. Nothing. Yeah, you just have to be blank because uh, it's it, it's really hard when you um when you start to think about it. Mm -hmm. You just have to blank everything out because you've trained, you've prepared months and weeks over, over, over doing the same technique, doing the same thing over and over again, trying to best your technique. Mm -hmm. So when when the opportunity arises, you don't think of anything else but performing what you what you what you used to, what mm -hmm. your body is used to doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very hard to say to say to think to 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 have a blank mind, but at the same time, sometimes to have control of yourself. Of who you are as an individual, as an athlete. Okay, so so what would you say? You'd say this being a, having a blank mind, yeah. that's the best state to be in. That's the best state to be in. So how would you say you get into that state? Getting into that state, it varies from athlete to athlete, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Um, i.e. for myself, I just want to go out there and just perform what I do. You may want to talk to yourself spiritually. You may mm -hmm. want to talk to the people around you. You mm -hmm. may want to sort of do your own thing. You, mm -hmm. you may have things that you do that mm -hmm. nobody will understand. Okay, to so, get into that state of mind. So, so talk to me about the yeah. things that you do in particular to get yourself <laughs> into that state. Of mind. Or are, you, are you giving away some secrets? No, no, no. It's not. There's nothing like that. It's um, it, like I said, it varies. For me, it's just I know what I need. I know what I need to do. Mm -hmm. It's me against the bar and that next person sitting right next to me, which is my opponent. Mm -hmm. I just got to make sure if I want to beat this guy, I need to lift heavier weight than him. Mm -hmm. And to be in that state of mind, I just need to blank everything that's happening around me out. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Block everything out. The noise, mm -hmm. the thought in your head. Sometimes mm -hmm. we, our thoughts are our own uh, enemies, or should I say are the biggest sort of... Um, uh, opponents that we can actually compete against. It's yeah. like the thoughts of you sitting there mm -hmm. and having to think too much about what that person is doing mm -hmm. can make you just feel big time. Yeah, okay. You understand? So sometimes it's, it's good just shut down my brain. I don't want to think about anything but think just have a blank mind. Look mm -hmm. serious, you know? Just blank everything out. I just want to be there and just watch watch what's happening around me. Taking the energy watch people around me and taking other people's energy. Mm -hmm. From the moment I know that if I'm competing against you and you sit in there in that corner looking at me, you must, there must be something going through your head that you're afraid of me. Mm. I take that to, I use that to my advantage. I see, okay, that's it. And then that's when I get into my zone. Okay. I blank you out. I can still see what you're doing, but I blank you out completely. I see. You understand? Yeah. So, 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 so let's take us. So, in terms of the the first your first championships, the British Championship, mm -hmm. um, how did you fare in the end? How did you do? Uh, it went on, it went okay. I came uh, I came in the fifth place mm -hmm. for my first British Championship. Um, what can I say? It was good mm -hmm. because it was a uh, it was another obstacle that I got over just to get me ready for that same year. There was the African Championship. Happening. Okay, and. Uh, that was a very uh, good competition to prep me for the big one. Okay. You understand? So I, I, saw, I saw the African Championship as it's a continental championship. Okay. It's going to have all the African 
countries out there to compete. Okay. So yeah, if I go out there and I compete well and I do great, guess what? I could be I could be among the top all the elite athletes in Africa as right. a weightlifters. Wow. Okay. You understand? Because we, we I, I watch TV or I watch the competition going on world championship, and I'm going to compete against somebody that has been to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. That's a privilege for me to compete against somebody like that. Okay, so 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 let's take us to the Af- African Championship. So you're there now, yeah, and you're seeing people that you see in the, in the Olympics, right? There we go, yeah. Yeah, looking at them. So what what state of mind did you have to get in to make sure you weren't um, you weren't intimidated by the fact that these were maybe they're your heroes as yeah. well? So you know, you, inti- the, you didn't feel any way. I, I wasn't intimidated in any form of way. Okay. Why? Because um, from the get-go, before I got to the African Games or the Championship, mm-hmm. I'd already said to myself, whatever these people are lifting, I can do. I can lift the exact same way. But then it's with time. Mm-hmm. I've got, got to pay my dues in training. Mm-hmm. Those people that I've been copying against, they've been doing the sports for over 10 years, 15 years. Mm-hmm. Weightlifting is not sports that you just pick up overnight. Mm-hmm. It involves technique. It involves... I don't know how to put it. It involved one being able to understand what they want yeah. once they get on the platform. Okay. Some people may go out and then just enjoy the, the experience of people watching them yeah. and just lose themselves in midst of all that noise. You understand? Okay. Yeah. And then once they would just go over there and see, and see themselves as gladiators mm-hmm. that they're performing for people to watch. Mm. You understand? And yeah. The certain the type of athlete like that. Okay. For me, I went over there knowing that whatever these people are doing, I can easily do the same thing. But I got to pay my dues first. Okay. At the same time, enjoy the experience that I'm going through because that's what's preparing me for the next journey. I see. So, 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 so it's a, it's a balance of you want to enjoy the process, yeah. but you want to make sure you do what you need to do. I go out there and do it. Get the job done. Get the job done. The job needs to get. It, it needs to be done at some point. Okay. But then in the process, enjoy it. Watch people learn from the people around me. Mm. You understand? If it's during training, I watch from the people around me. Mm. If it's competition, I'm here to compete. I don't know you. I'll say hello to you, good luck, mm-hmm. but I'm here to compete against you. Yeah. If you've been doing the sports for 15 years and I come and I, com- I compete in the same category as you, mm-hmm. and you place fifth or you, um, you let's sorry, if you place third mm-hmm. and I place fifth, mm-hmm. that's two, two places behind you. Mm. Give, me, give me five years and I'm, I'm going to take your position. Okay. You understand? So that, that is my belief. Okay. And that's my opinion anyway. Mm. That's what's helped me quite a lot in everything that I do. So when I went to the African Championship or the Games, that's the mindset I had. I needed to perform. Okay. But then enjoy it. Okay, so so how did you balance performing and enjoying it? Tell me about tell me about the story. During training time I had fun. I meet them. I meet Who did you meet? Tell oh, me. Oh, I met you um I met the Egyptian athletes. The Egyptian athletes are good. They're really top really? lifters. Top they've been, they've been, they've been like I said, among the best lifters in the world. Any names? Um, not particularly. But, but you know, you know, yeah, you know yeah, the faces of the people. Yeah. So in your um, way, in your weight category. In my weight category. Okay. So just watching them train and watching how they approach their training. I see. It's learning from them. Uh, okay, you understand? Okay. Mm-hmm. Still got to be nice, talk to them, mm-hmm. make friends. You understand? When you make friends, you get to learn a lot more about our craft. Minecraft mm. because you know something I may not know. Yeah. So what, what 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 do you do? I talk to you, share it with me. Mm. I pick it up from you, pick up the tips. Mm. I'm not afraid to come up to you and ask you. Oh, I'm having a little issue with my wrist when I snatch. Mm. How do I correct that? You may mm. say, Oh yeah, adjust the grip of your bar. Adjust this. Adjust adjust that. Focus and just focus on your lift. Don't worry too much about the pain. You know, it's just the advice that you learn along the way. So. So it seems like it's a competitive environment, but people still have time to to give people a little something yeah, to say. I, that's the whole ethos of uh, the Olympics I see. and sports in general. Sports is supposed to be, you know, what friendly, mm. but then we compete against each other. That's that's the exciting part of it. I say to, I come up to you and say, you know what? Well done today. Mm. I said, well done to you because you did well, mm. because it was great, because I push you, because we're competing against each other. Mm. Or I, before we compete, I come up to you and say, good luck today. Mm-hmm. I, I say good luck to you because I really want you to push me. The, the better you do, the better, the better I get yeah, because yeah. I am chasing against you. That's what sports is. We can mm-hmm. see, we can all sit down and have dinner or have breakfast before training. But when we get to training or when we get to the the platform to lift against each other, 
mm. whether it's me against you and a bar. Mm. So I, I suppose it's just all about that. It's just enjoying what's happening around you, making friends, but then still keeping that competitive urge mm-hmm. to it. Okay, so, so so then this this comes to the competitive urge. Uh-huh. How how did you do then? How did you um, perform in, in that that in that environment? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I believe I went well. To be honest, um, I, it was my first championship in terms of continental, mm-hmm. and I was really pleased with it because I was moving towards uh, in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And within that same year, I went on to going into the world championship. See. Of starting the same sports, like I started the sports in one year, mm-hmm. I went on to continental, and into one world championship, and okay. I, the future looks bright. Mm. <laughs> I, I could imagine. There's, there's a lot of hard work. So from starting the sport to um, British championships, African championships, yeah. and then the world championships. Yeah. Where were the world championships? It was in Houston. Houston. Yeah, Houston. In, in America. Yeah, in America. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. So, and how how was that? Because that was would that have been the first time you you've been returning to America after being in West Virginia? Um, no. I, I go back to America back and forth. Cause okay. I, got, I got relations over there. I got family okay, over okay, there. Cool. So, so right. But it's just um going into the World Championship. Uh, to be honest with you, I was scared. Uh huh. It was one of the most daunting moment in my sports career. Because okay. then it, it was a point. I got to a point two weeks or a few weeks before the competition, I actually sat down and said to my coach whether I should go or not. And I'd already, my team had already registered me, everything was done. Mm-hmm. Um, I was scared, to be honest with you, okay. because I was moving from one, one stage to the next. This mm-hmm. is the world championship. Yeah. We're talking about the elite level, elite level of athletes. Yeah, so then- and I've got to go against these people. Mm-hmm. These are the people that people talk about. You understand? Mm. They like people. They like heroes for people, for other people. Mm. But, I, like, during that period where I sat down, mm-hmm. I spoke to my coach, mm. I spoke to a few people, and... Okay, could you take me back to that moment where you spoke to the coach? Where were you? What's the scene? What's the scenario? It was during training. I went to training, and my, I must have said to my coach, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm scared. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go to this world championship. The mm-hmm. first thing he said was, you have to go. Mm. You understand? You have to go because this uh, this is a great opportunity for you. Not many people have done it. Within the same year, you've been selected to go to the World Championship as mm. you started. So imagine you start sports in January and in December you're competing against the top level people that you see on TV, people that you hear people come into the gym and talk about, oh, you've seen this guy lift this much weight. Mm-hmm. And you know where in the area it's like it's it's quite daunting and scary, okay. but I had a good team around me mm-hmm. to guide me towards the the correct path. Okay. So my coaches, my friends, family were saying to you, just go. And I had to go. I got to a point that I realized, you know what? I lose nothing. I have mm-hmm. to go there and see where I sit on the stage or where I see. I mean, where I sit um, in terms of world level, mm-hmm. where I sit, where I'm ranking at. Okay. And me, I just went and I just enjoyed it, to be honest. You I got enjoyed. PB, and yeah. it was great. Okay. <laughs> it was great. And, and did you go there with the intention to enjoy, just really enjoy yeah, the Yeah, I, I went out there with the intention to enjoy, to to be a midst of all of these people and just learn something different from them as well. Okay. Make friends, you know? Mm. Enjoy what enjoy when I get the opportunity. When I got the opportunity to go on the stage and, and get, get PB. Get a PB, yeah. and you did get a PB. I get I got what was the PB? I got um, I got one thirty two snatch, one hundred thirty two kilogram snatch, mm-hmm. and uh, clean and jerk one seventy. Clean and jerk one seventy. Yeah, and prior to that, I had done one sixty five clean and jerk. Okay. So it's a five kilogram PB, two kilogram uh, PB on a snatch, and it was okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, in the no, same it was year, in the same year. In the same, you know, it is, it is. I mean. <laughs> I mean, do you think it's, it says that maybe you're a bit of a natural in terms of lifting? Uh, how, how much would you say there's the natural and how much would you say there's I'm working hard to make this happen? Yeah. There, and I've, I've got the support of my environment. There's a bit of both, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said in the beginning, I've always knew that I had that strength, mm. the immense energy that runs through my vein and I can just feel it. You understand? When yeah. I see something I love to do, I just pour everything in it. Yeah. And I make sure I execute it to the last second. 
Yeah. So it's 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 it's, it's there. But then that comes with the um, with the drive of wanting to do something. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have the drive to want to do it, you you're never gonna get there. You might be you might be as talented as you you are, mm -hmm. but then if you don't really want to do it, it's it's sort of like you never get to the point that you you hope to. Or mm -hmm. you, you never get to your full potential if you, if you understand what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. no, I do understand. What um, you're with the hard work within my first year, I worked my ass off. I did uh, local competitions and national mm -hmm. competitions just just so I see, just so I could see where I was going towards mm -hmm. in terms of my numbers, in terms of what I was capable of doing. Mm -hmm. And my coach pushed me to to, to work hard. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to weightlifting, you cannot be lazy. Yeah. To be honest with you, you can mm -hmm. be as great as you are, you can be as talented as you are, mm -hmm. but we're lifting involved lifting something heavy off the ground mm -hmm. and taking it over your head. It requires a lot of focus, dedication, commitment. If you cannot commit to a certain weight, you're mm -hmm. never going to be able to lift it off the ground. Mm -hmm. you, in the process, you might be able to do it, but in the process, you might hurt yourself as well. Okay, so, so say, for example, in terms of commitment, yeah. sometimes do you see people not committing to a lift, not quite doing a lift. What would you say the problems you, you look at and you see that he or she yeah. didn't quite do it? It's, the way. It, it's not committing to a lift. Sometimes people just, they're not committed to what they're doing mm. in general. Mm. It's not just lifting only. Mm. If you're not committed to what you're doing in general, you, it's, it's just taking it in relation to everything in life. Mm. You understand? Sometimes you go to competitions or to a gym like a weightlifting gym and people are training in there you just watch them and they're just hanging around and chit chatting and stuff like that it's a good it's a good community mm -hmm. for people to be in mm -hmm. because you, you build a, a great connection with different people yeah. from all walks of life mm -hmm. but then when it comes to the point of you focusing on your lifting mm -hmm. that fraction of a second mm -hmm. is all you need distractions blocked out going back to the competition, when I say I blank everything out, mm. you have to be able to block out every distraction. Mm. Everything. You understand? And it's... It, go, it, it goes on to say, is if you're not committed, you cannot do anything, basically. Mm. You, if you're not committed in every, anything that you do, you, it's not going to go well. Mm. So when it comes to sports, or when it comes to my sports, as in a weightlifter, as an athlete, mm. weightlifter, commitment is everything for me. I see. Because I had to commit to be able to train hard enough to get to the stage that I am right now. Mm -hmm. I had to commit every single training session. Even when my body's tired, the last single rep, mm -hmm. if I'm doing repetitions, and I do first two reps, and the first one is going to be easy, second one, medium. You understand? Yeah, I, no, I see what you mean. There we go. Some of us are not fortunate enough to, to, to sort of like wake up in the morning, get themselves ready, and go training. Mm. I've got to go work. Mm. So if I wake up in the morning and the first thing on my mind is training, what does that tell you? Mm. I am not fully committed to my work, but I am fully committed to my, I am fully committed to my lifting mm. or to my sports. You understand where I'm coming from? Okay, yeah, I understand. I understand perfectly. So now let's, let's get to um, one, one last story. So you, you've won, uh, you won a Commonwealth J? No, the Commonwealth Championship. Commonwealth Championship. The 2016 so, Commonwealth Championship. You won the 2016 Commonwealth yeah, Championship. Yeah, and I just, I just recently returned back from the Commonwealth Games. Okay, and you recently? Yeah. So, so talk to us about the, the Commonwealth Championship. As well. Oh, the Commonwealth Championship was real. Like, um, in 2016, mm -hmm. um, it was a very weird year because 2016, me and my team, the male team, the national team, qualified for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't fortunate enough to be selected at the time, but I was, in, I mean, in all retrospect, I was the, I was the one lifting the heaviest. So I was mm -hmm. the one supposed to go to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, due to Africa's sports and the way the system is run, mm -hmm. I, I, I wasn't lucky to be selected to go to the to go to the Olympics. Okay. Um, but during that same year, they, they had a Commonwealth Championship in Ma Malaysia. And um, I went out there. I wasn't expecting any medal. I was just expecting to go out there to get ready for the next championship. Um, went out there, and the opportunity arose for me to do really well. And I did well, and then I earned myself the gold medal. Um, 
yeah, it was very different. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, uh, it's an experience that can never be repeated again. It's, mm-hmm. it's, unless I win a Olympic medal or something like that, that will just take over. But with, you know, with hard work and dedication, and fingers crossed, hopefully mm-hmm. the opportunity will arise for me to compete in, uh, in the Olympics. 2020, and then uh, we see we take it from there and see how it goes. So, mm. so you're looking at Tokyo then? Yeah, Tokyo. Yeah. So, and your prep for Tokyo is the World Championship? Yeah, so? prep for Tokyo is the World Championship. Um, this year, World Championship in Turkmenistan. Mm-hmm. And I, I have um, the African Championship next year. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I've got to do a few competitions. As a qualification slot, so I got to do this competition to see if I can qualify. I have to be top fifteen in the world. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. So I mean, there's there's a couple of questions I always ask. Yeah. The, it's not unrelated, but let's see if we can make it related. So, if there's a, a mental health problem that you've seen mm-hmm. in in your sport mm-hmm. or in, in anything that you think, oh, I'd like to wish to to deal with that mm-hmm. or or cure that, which one would you say is the most important? Like, have you have you ever felt or any difficulties? No, mentally? it's not difficulties actually, because when when it comes to mental health issues, um, it's it's a very sensitive subject to be honest yeah, with yes, you. It is. Mm-hmm. When it comes to that, um, sports can help a lot. Mm-hmm. That's what I've noticed. Um, when I was growing up, was, I, I used sports to escape from a lot of things. I see. You understand? I just use sports to escape from a lot of things, and it could be family relate sort of relating issues, mm-hmm. or maybe my personal issues and stuff like that. It was always a way for me to release my aggression. Mm-hmm. So when I like, I go back to playing football, when I started football, mm-hmm. I had so much aggression in me mm-hmm. that I just wanted to get rid of at some point. Yes. And so when I when I had opportunity to put on a helmet and put on the shoulder parts and transform into something that was on the on the pitch, mm-hmm. it helped me to release whatever was going through my head or whatever problems I was having at the time. Yeah, so so when it comes to sports and mental health issues, it's um. Do you think it kind of it can transform something negative into a positive? positive thing. Yes, it, yeah. it, the, you just said it perfectly fine, perfectly yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Transform something negative into positive mm-hmm. thing in life. Um, is I don't know how to put it, man. It's, it's for someone to. Uh, sports can help a lot. Mm-hmm. When it comes to mental health issues, our, our, in my opinion, and experience, yeah, it can always help transform people's life. Yeah, I mean, and it has transformed. It has transformed my life into being somebody different mm. in general life, in regular day to day life activities. It's completely different. Mm. And um, or if 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 one have or if one get opportunity to compete at the level that I am right now, mm. they will notice that it's everywhere. That mental health issue. Mm. It's there. Mm. It's, it's it's there mm. until you break through it. Mm. And if you love something, if you love something relating to sports, and you have any issues, and sometimes you want to get you you want to get your own sort of like you time and stuff like that, mm. sports is the best way. Mm. And particularly with some an individual sports or, or team sports, anything at all. Um, I used to say to people when I go to the gym and I train. I stay in the gym before when I used to train in the gym for three hours, four hours sometimes. I used to be at night. But when the gym box and stuff, sorry, not gym box, um, pure gym, mm-hmm. the 24 hour gym started. Mm-hmm. Man, I used, to, I used to be in, in the gym from 12 a.m. in the morning to possibly 4 a.m. in the morning. Mm-hmm. Just me in there training hard, training, training, training. Wow. Getting, getting rid of stress, getting rid of depression, getting rid of anything mm-hmm. that I was feeling at the time. I mean, I hope it answered your question. I hope it helped people, anybody listening to this. Just whatever you do, and just don't beat yourself down. Mm. If you have any issues at all, just go on with it. Do something. Find a sport that you, that'll make you free. Mm. When you go into doing that sport or whatever activity that you've chosen to do, make it your place of sanctuary. You yeah, understand? I see, I understand? Make it special for you. When you go in there, nothing else can touch you. Yeah. Transform into transform into a monster, a beast. Transform into something else that nobody will understand. Yeah. But then, with time, they will understand why you are that person when it comes to that moment. Mm. You understand? Yeah, you transform into you transform into something different. You transform into your your very best self. Yes, you transform. 
it could be it could be the worst thing ever. Mm-hmm. People look at you and they, they, you they'll think, who the hell's this guy? Mm-hmm. A second ago he was nice talking to, mm-hmm. now he's a completely different person. I I I I just I love it, man. When I the reason I'm talking about transformation is when when I transform, mm-hmm. when I go through that transformation, it's mm-hmm. it's different. Mm-hmm. The sensation, the feeling, mm-hmm. the energy, the drive of wanting to complete something mm-hmm. once you started it. And once you go into that form, nothing else can touch you. You're invincible. Mm. You are beyond anybody's authority. You are your own master. It's like ah, it's it's different. This is very sen- I'm I'm sensitive right now because this is mm. this is part that many people don't understand or many people get to see. This is this is different. Mm-hmm. You understand? It's like this is very. It's yeah, like I said. It's a, it's a very sensitive topic when it comes to mental health. Um, relating to sports and stuff, it's just different. I don't, I don't even know what to say anymore. It's just, no, no, it's cool. It's cool. No, it's you fine. Know, when you talk about something, you get goosebumps because you're passionate about what you're talking about. Oh, it's that sort of feeling. One, it's real. It's, it's real. You know, you know and and I, I, all I would say is uh, thank you for being so real for us all throughout the interview. And uh, what, um, where can we find you in terms of social media? Or what are you going to be doing in the future? Yeah, I'm on um, I'm on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So Forrest or say so F O W R E S T E R, and the last name is Osei O S E I. So you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on uh, Facebook on my Facebook page as well. Um, I just right now I'm going through the process of getting myself ready, going through my next phase of training, mm-hmm. the building block. Because uh, in four within the next four weeks I have a competition, the British Championship mm-hmm. in Coventry, and um, I'm I'm right now sort of like getting myself ready, recovering from a few small niggles and injuries as well at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I'm right now building myself up and really enjoying myself. So um, if anybody want to keep up with my story and my journey into in, into the next competitions and championship, I do regularly post uh, videos of myself lifting or squatting or maybe just doing something silly or training just to cool down after training and stuff like that. So yeah, you can find me on, on uh, Instagram. Okay, so we look forward to seeing you. Yeah, it's a Thanks pleasure. So Thank you for having me here. Yeah.